Thank you. Thank you for introduction. I'm going to tell you about our work, modular hardware design of pipeline circuits with hazard. As a background, let's look into the combinator-based modular hardware design. In these days, we are in the golden age of hardware acceleration. With the end of the not scaling and more slow, the hardware industry is producing more specialized accelerators, such as GPUs, TPUs, NPUs, and DPUs. Due to its variety, hardware design requires high productivity. As a result, many productive design tools have appeared. After long domination of Verilog and VHDL, high-level hardware description languages like Chisel, and high-level synthesis tools like Xilinx Bytis are widely used in the circuit design. Among various techniques, some high-level hardware description languages used ideas from functional programming, such as combinator and type system. In this work, we focused on the combinators. Let me tell you more about combinators. With the functional languages combinators, you can describe hardware circuits in a modular fashion. For the motivational example, let's consider the FIL filter. This circuit multiplies the three mostly sent values in the input stream with C0, C1, and C2 respectively, and then outputs the sum of these products as an output stream. For example, if the input stream consists of the values 1, 0, and minus 1 in sequence, the output stream would be C0, C1, C2 minus C0, minus C1, and minus C2 in sequence. So now let's see how to modularly describe the FIL filter. You can see that the filter is composed of three subcomponents. First, it stores the last three input values using multiple resistors, or in other words, we are windowing the input value. Second, it multiplies the three input values with different constant values respectively. Finally, they are accumulated into the final output. We can modularly compose these subcomponents with combinators. More specifically, you can construct the model by chaining the combinators. The first window combinator transforms the input value to multiple input values by instantiating registers. Similarly, the second map combinator multiplies the three input values and the constants. And the final sum combinator accumulates the values to produce the final output. As you can see, you can modularly construct the file filter from its subcomponents by just chaining the combinators. It makes it easy to understand the data and control flow and also reduce the error-prone tasks in connecting wires. So the combinators are good, but you observe that their applications are severely limited to simple circuits. For the motivational example, let me tell you more details with the inodal pipe, pipe stage pipeline CPU core. To briefly explain how the circuit processes instructions, let's use this load instruction as an example. In the fetch stage, the circuit accesses the instruction memory to fetch the bytecode. Then in the decode stage, it decodes the bytecode to identify that it's a load instruction and accesses the register file to get the value of the source register. Next, in the execute stage, it performs arithmetic operations such as calculating address values. In the memory stage, it accesses the data memory to read or write values. And finally, in the write back stage, it writes the results to the register file. So we may expect that the pipeline CPU core also would be represented as follows with combinators. However, in reality, they require a global control logic to support handling, handling multiple instructions simultaneously in a pipeline circuit. Each stage needs to communicate with this control logic, so we cannot apply combinators directly to this circuit, and it makes it hard to understand data and control flow. There was a related work that generalized the combinator to decompose the control logic for structural hazard. However, the limitation of this work 
is that it cannot be applied for data or control hazard. So to address this problem, we generalize the combinators so it can be applied for also data and control hazard. Before we go into our solution, let's look into the related work and its limitations. There was a related work which is applying combinators for pipeline circuits with a structural hazard. The structural hazard occurs when multiple, multiple instructions within a pipeline trying to attempt to access the same resource simultaneously. For example, let's assume that two load instructions are being executed and the previous instruction encounters a data cache miss. In this case, both instructions continue to progress until the I1 reaches the memory stage where the decache miss occurs. Consequently, I1 needs to remain in the memory stage due to the data cache miss. Also, since I1 occupies memory, I2 must store in the execute stage too. The execute stage needs to know whether the memory is occupied or not at the next cycle, so the memory stage needs to send this information to the execute stage. And this information can be decomposed using the valid read interface. The valid read interface is a communication protocol in hardware. When there's a sender and a receiver, the sender indicates whether it has data to send through a valid bit, and the receiver indicates whether it's ready to receive data through a ready bit. When both are true, the sender sends payload to the receiver. So instead of relying on control logic to communicate the information that memory is occupied, we can connect the execute stage and the memory stage using the valid read interface. Then by setting the ready bit to first, we can express the, that the memory is occupied without the need for global control logic. So in our previous work, ShakePro proposed the combinators for, for valid read interfaces. So the circuits with only structural hazard can be represented with generalized combinators. However, the limitation is that the valid read interface cannot be used for data and control hazard. The data hazard occurs when the late instruction is dependent on the previous instruction's result. For example, this, in, this, this example writes the results to the R2 in I1 and read the value of I2 in I2. Then both instructions continue to progress until the I2 reaches the decode stage where the read of I2 occurs. Here, I2 needs to remain in the decode stage because the result of I2 is unavailable now. And in the next cycle, the memory stage can bypass the result of I2 to the decode stage and now I2 can continue to progress. And control hazard is another type of hazard which occurs when the misprediction happens. For example, this example mispredicts the next PC from the branch instruction. When the misprediction is detected in the execute stage, then it needs to send the discard information to the decode stage and send the correct, correct next PC information to the fetch stage. So to deal with this data and control hazard, we need to send these signals to backwards through the control logic. However, these values can, cannot be expressed with the valid red interface with two reasons. First, the backwards signal needs to be wider. For example, the information that memory is occupied can be expressed with a one-bit ready signal. However, the information needed to reserve data hazard, such as value of R2 will be 42 requires more than one bit. Second, the transfer condition needs to be more flexible. For instance, to express that data should be communicated when memory is occupied, but not when R2 is not ready, we need to be able to send the information that the required register address is R2, which requires more complex condition. So we generalize the valid read interface 
to address this problem. We defined hazard interface by generalized the valid red interface. First, it allows sending resolver signal, which, which has arbitrary type instead of just one bit red signal in the backward direction. Also, we can express the receiver is ready in the transfer condition as a ready function, which takes payload and its resolver as an argument. With this hazard interface, you can decompose the control logic to represent the data hazard as mentioned earlier. For example, the execute stage sends the address of the register being processed later and the data value that can be bypassed to the decode stage as backward signal. Then the payload can be transferred if there is a data can be bypassed while there, there is no stored. We also provided syntax for defining the hazard interface so that it can be used in the code. Users can specify the type of payload and reserve for the hazard interface. They also able to write a ready function that takes payload and reserve as inputs and outputs the Boolean value, which represents the ready condition. This definition is quite general. For example, valid red interface is an instance of hazard interface. In here, the type of reserver signal is just Boolean value, which corresponding to the ready bit, and the ready function is just the reserver signal itself. And it can also be used to represent the interface between the decode stage and the execute stage. In here, the reserver signal contains bypassed register's address, which has type U8, and bypass the register's data, which has type option of U32. The ready function here checks there is a bypass data while it is not stored. Using such hazard interfaces, it's possible to represent a pipe-stage pipeline CPU core by decomposing the global control logic into combinators. Also, each stage is further decomposed into more primitive combinators. Now we evaluate the case studies on 5-stage CPU core and 100 Gbps Ethernet leak. First, we conducted experiments with 5-stage CPU core. We compared the original SODOR CPU core in Chisel and its port with hazard interfaces in performance, power, and area. For performance, we simulated the CPU core with core mark and MASUT benchmarks. We observed that the CPI is exactly the same as original design, and ours consume less area and power than original design. But maximum frequency is lower than original design. We believe that this trade-off is due to our compiler optimization, and more details are on our paper. Next, we conducted experiments with 100 Gbps Ethernet leak, for performance, we compare the original quantum in Verilog and its port with hazard interfaces in throughput and resource consumption. For throughput, we measured on real hardware with TCP IP and file serving benchmarks. We observed that the hazard interface version consumed 6% more lookup tables and 3% less flip flops in an FPGA. And for the throughput, there was less than 2% difference between the original design and our port of it. So, hazard interface doesn't incur significant overhead of resource consumption or throughput in various benchmark configurations. It's quite expected because you can precisely describe RTL circuits in hazard interfaces like in Verilog or BSD. In conclusion, our key contributions are Generalize valid red interface to hazard interface and propose primitive combinators for hazard interface and apply combinators to pipeline circuits with hazard. Additionally, the paper includes more details such as primitive combinators, CPU implementation example, type systems for combination loop detection, and so on. Thank you for listening. Thank you. We have uh, time for questions.
Yeah, I might ask a question. Um, if you go back to your fir first performance comparison. Yep. Uh, just back one. Yeah. Oh. Mm, okay. Yeah. So um, I, I just got a little lost there, and I wasn't sure. So you're at ours, and you've got Sodor. <coughs> what exactly is the difference? Is uh, so. Yeah. Can you just ex explain more exactly what you're comparing here? Test bench uh, with some risk pipe test benches in simulate cycle accurate simulation, and in result, the CPI was same as original and our port of it. And for the power and area, we used some open open load open source ASIC flow, and we synthesized the two two designs. And in power power and area. Uh, we, our, our power and area was less than the original design, but the critical path was larger than the original design. So there is a trade-off of it then. Thanks. Yes. Hey, uh, it was a really nice talk. So I had a question about the loop detection part. Uh, so like if you are able to figure out uh, that, so can you do further optimizations on loops? Like uh, circuit loops yeah. or maybe like you, you see repetitive patterns of RTL, so can you try to roll it into a loop or unroll some repetitive operations into a single? Mm. Currently, uh, actually I did not uh, think about it, but our target was on on describing the microarchitecture. So okay. there is, commonly there is no loops in the code. Okay. Yeah, so I think I need to think about it more. Okay, yeah. I'll talk to you after. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hi, I had a question about the whole um, combinator part you proposed. Do you have like a working, it wasn't really quite clear to me if you had like an actual like working implementation of that in a very specific language and if so like what are the like things are targeting like are you sort of targeting system Verilog like, like other generators or are you sort of like how yeah just to know how you're actually doing the like comparison to other implementations um, actually we built a domain specific specific language which is embedded in rust yeah so and then users can write code in rust then and we implemented a compiler that transforms the rust uh, our DSL to the Verilog, and we used that, Veri that generated Verilog code as an uh, input of the synthesis tools such as Bivado, and yeah, we compared in that way. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's uh, thank our speaker.